Well, talking about the nation of Scotland, um, it seems to have lost its identity. Um, you know, started the reform uh, about 400 years ago, and then there was anti-reformists that came in one way or another and uh, really corrupted a lot of the good doctrine, such as John Knox um, had built up. But yes, um, it's a very important thing um, for all the nations to consider um, what's happening today, as there is a confusion not only in the world about what the truth is, but within the body of Christ, or the true body of Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahshua, the Messiah. You know, there is only one way to heaven, um, and that is through um, Yahweh's Son, who came in the Father's name. And, um, you know, this is all the scripture is a giveaway about why the Messiah came, to not only fulfill the law and the prophets, but to show people how to live them by accepting him as their king and as their saviour and then there's no other way to the father except through him so this is just a little rendition of the ten, ten ancient thrones of Europe but it's only part of western Europe remember there's also eastern Europe and there is North Africa as well as parts of the Middle East which the current EU is moving into a fair Bible scholars say that uh, it's a ten nation federacy, but the Bible does talk about literal ten kings, so these ten kings can rule over vast amount of areas. And as we've spoken in the last video about Prince Charles, if indeed he becomes the king of England um, and Wales, and perhaps even Scotland as well in the Commonwealth, I believe he's put an application into the EU to be the king of the EU. Now if that happens, he will have rulership in this final um, end time beast power which means that he will appoint a priesthood which could come from the Vatican um, as the Vatican has radically changed many of its religious policies of late to resemble more of the doctrines of Atlantis the ancient doctrines of Atlantis um, which is very astrological based which is um, many secret societies use things that, such as geometry in their architecture, in their town planning, and even as you see there, very similar to ancient Nineveh, and just a little map there of uh, the northeastern United States where we see a similar um, three city uh, chain there, like we have the three stars of Orion's belt, it goes from there it says Washington DC, New York and Providence and if you calculate, I think 39 degrees is the number um, that you get, it goes down to the Bermuda Triangle and there's, there's all sorts of other things you can calculate from that such as the one here which is uh, which uses different shapes which is quite renowned in occultism and of course it's not found at all in Biblical Christianity and yet uh, I guess all the things that uh, Biblical Israel were told not to learn they learned and I guess a lot of these secret societies were formed and they still hold the seat of power in many many parts of the world today certainly in the West but you know as I've said before um, as the father that's, that's created you know the stars and all the secrets of the universe really belong to Yahweh the father to tell his children and there is a being in the universe that seeks to pervert and twist the truths and even the great mysteries and wisdom that are in the stars because we read in Genesis that they are for signs and these signs aren't for astrologers or astronomers they actually all speak of the Messiah as you see this example of an ancient Roman calendar you can see that the current Gregorian calendar looks nothing like, like it did 1700 years ago this is what it looked like before Constantine came along and again it looked quite different at the time of Yahshua um, when Constantine came along, all they really did was rename the statues, um, which again are based on um, the worship of the luminaries in the heavens by calling them names of gods. And they made idols such as this here, which is the idol of Saturn. You see the sun disk on the head or the horned or winged disk. Um, either or really, because the pagans were not only involved in sun worship, but they also had knowledge of perhaps UFOs but we'll go into that a little bit later here's another example 
of a horn disc. This is actually one of the ancient Egyptian idols here, and it reflects back to the mother and child worship and Nimrod, which we get still today at um, Christos Mass, <laughs> which goes back thousands of years before the birth of the Messiah, and of course the true Messiah of Israel was born nowhere near um, December the 25th, because true time is counted by the sun and the moon. Going back to the priesthood a little bit, it seems that politicians have been in our face very much involved in um, changing policies and uh, changing long-standing laws in nations and even constitutions, but uh, basically as we see the last Prime Minister of Britain seemed to just go everywhere. I think it was revealed that he finally settled in the Roman Catholic Church, um, but he seemed to have hand in just about everything that was happening and uh, of course it's the new, new world order that they're trying to achieve here, which is the ancient vision of the vision of the ancient The Atlantis. Brotherhood of the Snake. One could say that when Atlantis and its continent sank, the Earth left the fourth and fifth dimensions to enter the realm of the three-dimensional material structure. With the fall in the third dimension, and instead of harmony, more and more opposites entered the consciousness and the actions of human beings. Even the elite priesthood was affected, and they dogmatically defended their truths. And the Ten King rulership that it had disappeared under the sea many thousands of years ago. Whether that's true or not, we can't be certain, but uh, it may have existed before the Flood. None of us can really be sure what, what existed before the Flood, except obviously if, if you've dove down and into some of these lost cities and actually saw for yourself what is down there. But what we have in the surface is still uh, giant structures like the Pyramid at Giza. And as we see an example there of a UFO settling at the top there, many believe that these structures were actually built by extraterrestrials. Um, some actually believe they were built by the ancient Israelites who worked as slaves there for over 400 years. There are quite a few possibilities, but we must consider also that the f there are many fallen angels in the book of Revelation, and we must consider that uh, they got to earth somehow. Um, they must have fallen in some way, and they got their technology. And even today, we, saw, we see the Nazis in involved um, only about 50 or 60 years ago making UFOs. So again, they must have got their technology from somewhere. We see some ancient pictures there of um, so-called UFOs in, in the Bible, and this one a sketch from the book of Ezekiel. So we just wonder if uh, the true God, Elohim, has what are called living creatures that uh, trans transport is thrown around the, the universe and it comes from heaven to earth on occasion so we just wonder that uh, you know that Satan the devil you know the dragon is a fallen cherub and we know that the way cherubs are described that they have all kinds of eyes um, both within and without so we have one set of technology perhaps I think this is where the New World Order will finish in Jerusalem. We see the pyramidal structure there, this one on this um, high court in Jerusalem, and it's worth taking a look around. It was built by the Rothschild family, and as we see other technologies um, that are emerging just now, such as this projection method that uh, Prince Charles used recently to deliver a speech, there is the implant and the chip that may be instituted very very soon by some method of deception and the Bible says that if you take this chip that you'll be damned to hell for eternity so it's a good idea to pay attention um, to what's happening according to biblical prophecy because the Father has seen all these things happen in advance and warned us through his Son Yahshua the Messiah and both he is the one who has shown us these prophecies and he is also the one that can save us from them if we put our trust in him now, if you've ever travelled to India, um, you'll be able to meet people such as this youngster here, um, who has extra digits in his feet and in his hands, and is said to be one of the Anunnaki fallen ones, as it were. We know they're fallen angels from the Book of Enoch and from Genesis 6-4. Now, I do recall when I visited India the last time, I was the best man at my wife's brother's wedding and after going to visit the family who were from a Hindu background they came to visit us at uh, 
her father's house and uh, after they had left I slept in a certain room and asked why I felt as though there was a presence in the room and I had a dream about this particular figure here which is I think the goddess of death in Hindu mythology but I actually felt the spirit in the room and I had to pray and whenever I prayed to Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah the presence did go away. It didn't really surprise um, the people who stayed in that house because they knew that they were from a Hindu background and perhaps they were only marrying into the family to get the chance of maybe working abroad or something like that. I wish them both all the best in their new family. Only the saints who have hung on to his, his word and continually kept their garments clean from sin. As we remember, this is the reason that Messiah came the first time, so that the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob may make a covenant with us through his son, Yahshua, the Messiah, so that we can be his living temples for his Holy Spirit and his truth.